Hi, I'm Neil Wojohn, an artist and developer on the Diablo 3 team. Today I'm going to give you a talk that I gave just recently at BlizzCon and their uh, lightning talk stage called Clickies, Traps, and Breakables, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Chandelier. So to start out, I want to tell you that early on in Diablo 3 we had this idea. Pretty simple idea, pretty good one. You know, wouldn't it be cool if we could kill monsters with the environment? Straightforward, right? You know? Uh, just trigger one thing that reacts somewhere else. Uh, get, let the player feel smart and tactical uh, with their gameplay. Sounds like it'd be really awesome, right? But turns out there's a lot of challenges that haunted us through development. It's a very problematic fantasy to chase. So... How many times would you encounter this in early Diablo? Say maybe even the Alpha. You know, you come into the cathedral and I'm here, the chandelier's over there, the monsters are here, and the trigger's on the other side. So you come into the dungeon and you like walk underneath and you go over and you trigger it, it drops behind you and the, sh the monsters are, it, it, it just misses, right? You just, you know, hit. It felt like when we were trying to make it work, that would just would never work. It was super frustrating. Um, and you know, Blizzard, Blizzard, we're all about polish and iteration. We want to make things work. We want to polish out all those kinks and make something really good. And, and you know, this this thing, this this rough gem, just we couldn't get those edges off. That made us crazy. Um, so we we figured, okay, so what happens? Usually what happens now? You go through the dungeon, you see the chandelier, you go, I'm not gonna be able to kill the guys with that thing. And so instead you just like you just you just kill the monsters. You just shoot them. You shoot them and you move on. So we say, okay, well, if the person's going to use their attack to kill the monsters, why don't we make it so that the traps can be triggered by an attack? And also, that, that makes some sense. You would think, um, okay, well, if I'm here, the tr trigger's over there, and the thing, the monster's under the thing, I can just shoot at it, and I'll be able to have a drop on them. Well, Falling Walls showed us that that was kind of true. It was nice you could hit it from afar, but you... But you didn't really still hit the monsters that often. Um, we're like, okay, well, Falling Wall and the Chandelier, they both have this problem. The Chandelier has to be by the trigger, and the Falling Wall has to be like in that one spot in the wall. So instead of having it be placed anywhere, let's make something that you can put anywhere. And then you can shoot it, and it'll go off. And so that's how, why we made the Exploding Barrel. A classic from previous games, right? That should, that should be good. But when you come across the Exploding Barrel... Again, I'm here, the monsters are there, you shoot the barrel, the monsters start running at me, the monsters don't run towards the barrel, they come at you. You hardly ever hit them. <sighs> yeah, man, this this was rough. Um, you, would, you wouldn't be surprised, you, I mean, you'd be surprised, there's a lot of uh, challenges that Diablo 3 has gone through, but one of the biggest things that we would talk about early on and go over and over and over were the chandeliers and the, the traps and the barrels and all these things. Um, just because, yeah, we could never quite get them right. Uh, so the game launched, um, these things shipped, and we we went into Reaper of Souls. And Reaper of Souls, we kind of stepped back and we're like, okay, 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 now is our chance for a do-over. We're gonna we're gonna make a better demon trap, right? And so, well, what were the problems to solve? Uh, so we want to be able to trigger from attack. We want to be placeable anywhere. We want to be a pure bonus. Like we just want to help you. Uh, and, you know, something that we started to notice was that uh, we didn't want to rob the player of of their kill. You know, like, we want the player to be able to, like, you know, have the last move, use their abilities to finish off the monsters. So, yeah, if the player gets to kill the monsters, that's also good. Um, and above all else, like, Reaper Souls, we want to make traps that were finally just effective. So, uh, so Ruins of Corvus was where we tried doing all this. Ruins of Corvus was going to be the... The dungeon where the traps tried to help you. The traps tried to, you know, they're, they're your spirits of your ancestors are aiding you to purge the evil within. Uh, so first good example is the doors. You click on the doors in the ruins of Corvus, and, you know, they go down, and it brings this, like, big, big blue swooshy at the bottom. And as monsters follow you inevitably through this door, they get slowed down as they're walking through that. And they're all in that little choke point, which makes it easy for you to just, just take them out, just, just kill them. Um, and that worked pretty well. That was actually really effective. Um, great way, like, instead of doing damage at all, we just trap the monsters. 
The next one that is a good example of this phase of development was the spirit totem. Now, the spirit totem is the pen ultimate uh, technical interactive, technical trap, because you hit the thing and it explodes with these homing missiles that fly out and kill the monsters. Just they automatically are going to hit them. The ghosts are just going out to kill dudes. And not only do they do that, but they also have a chain reaction that kill that opens up all the other spirit totems that are around them. And this, you know, some of the monsters die. It's good enough to kill some of the monsters, but not all of them. Some of the big ones stick around, and the ones that do stick around have a chilled effect on them. So they're like slowed down again, which makes it really easy for you to just take off, like kill the last couple big guys. You know, you still get to kill some of them, still get to waste a bunch of dudes, and it doesn't miss. You would think that this is like, hooray, we solved the problem, right? But not quite. Um, see, the problem is, it looks like we did all these things. It looks like checked all the boxes, right? But really, it left us with another question. What is a spirit totem? Like, really? What is a floor swooshy? It, there's no understandable fantasy with these things. I mean, if I tell you I'm going to drop a chandelier on a monster, I'm going to drop a freaking wall on a dude, you know what that means. But if I tell you that there's going to be some, there's going to be like a puddle of magic and he's going to get, kind of get like stuck in it, like spirit totem, like come on, you know. So we started questioning the future. Like, well, when we try to make this work technically, then the fantasy is bad. When we try and stick with the fantasy, then technically it doesn't work. And, you know, we were like, we'd spent a lot of time on it, on it. So we were starting to ask ourselves, you know, is it even worth it? You know, what is life? <laughs> you know, like what? So we, we, we said just for once, just for once, we're going to do one level and we're not going to put any interactives in it. We did a, the, the Realm of the Banished. We started off with that and we said this one, we're going to not going to play on interactives. We're going to play the level without them and see how it feels. And well, surprise, surprise, it felt really empty. Turns out that these interactive cookies are things that you might not necessarily notice them when they're there, but when they're gone, you really feel it. Like when they're gone, you notice they're, they're gone. Um, and we're like, wow, you know, like, of course we didn't leave it that way. We went back in and we added the, um, you know, those, those bugs that come out of the crystals, those guys and the ground clickies, little angels that go away into dust. And we added a bunch of stuff in eventually. Um, but uh, we, it helped us realize that clickies aren't just a Diablo thing with barrels, but they're a Blizzard Games tradition. So all the way back from, you know, Warcraft, like, what is it? Like, what, you know, or the cow, you know, in D1, or the chat gem. Like, all these cool things that you, they're there just to click on. They don't really give you a lot of technical gameplay. Uh, they're just, they just, they're just cool. And the best example of this recently was Hearthstone. When you're playing a game of Hearthstone against your, uh, against your opponent, you're waiting for them to take your turn. You can, you know, click on the little catapult or the rubber ducky or the treasure chest or all the like little parts of the map and that doesn't do anything for you it doesn't affect your cards it doesn't affect your luck it doesn't technical technically it doesn't do anything uh but what it does do is it's it gives the hearthstone board a sense of place it it, it, it makes it immersive you feel like that board is right there in front of you you feel like you could hold it because all these little things respond to you. And that sense of presence in Hearthstone's interactives, that's what that's what they do in Diablo. It makes all the things that you have and do feel that much more real. So take Hammer of the Ancients, for example. Feels great. Feels awesome when you're going through a room, killing a bunch of monsters, smashing a bunch of stuff. This skill, skill is fantastic. Uh, but take away all that stuff to smash, and, you know, it's still a beautiful skill. Like... The effects are great, but it doesn't, fear, it doesn't feel anywhere near as awesome as when there's a bunch of stuff in the room to wreck, you know? So, we still want to do this, right? We still want to go and get a piece of the environment and have it just drop on a monster. So, we, so we're, we're thinking about it and we're like, well, okay, okay, okay. What, you know, Diablo isn't a tactical game. 
it's an action game, but it's not like a strategy game. It's not StarCraft. StarCraft's awesome. Don't get me wrong. We love StarCraft. But Diablo is a little bit more about like getting lucky and happening across these cool moments. So we decided that every time you come across a chandelier in the cathedral, there would be a percent chance that you would have a group of zombies stuck underneath it. Just dumb zombies sitting there eating, eating a corpse. You can walk up to this group of idiots and just drop a chandelier on them. Just a freebie. You know, and then there's that one guy who has like a half a torso that like crawls out afterwards, and then you can kill him. So you get to use your ability, you get to finish him off, and you get to waste a bunch of dudes. Um, it doesn't matter if you timed it right. It doesn't matter if, you know, you were tactical, because it's not really about that. You feel, I mean, you feel clever because, well, zombies are dumb. That's something that zombies would do. They would sit underneath a chandelier. They're stupid. Zombies don't need to be smart. You don't need to really outsmart them. You just need to catch them, right? And uh, turns out that that's where we left it, and that's the chandelier we know and love now. That journey is how I and the rest of the Diablo team learned to stop worrying and just love the chandelier. Thank you very much.